If you're not digging conventional FHA or VA financing, today I'm going to give you three alternative ways to get into that house. You better get fired up. All right, so obviously most people tend to get into a home using either conventional FHA or VA financing, right? It's simple. You go to a lender, you hand them whatever paperwork it is they need, and boom, in 30, 40 days, you're in a house. It's pretty easy. For some people, credit is an issue, money can be an issue, and for others, they just don't want to use normal bank financing. So today, I'm gonna to give you three things, three alternative methods of financing that you can use to get into that next home. All right, so the first method is a contract for deed. It's probably the most well-known method, and it's really simple, right? The seller is keeping the deed to the house, and you are getting a contract that says if you fulfill all of the things that's, that are listed in the contract, you will get the deed at the end, right? It's very similar to what Wells Fargo, Citibank, Bank of America are gonna do with you when you sign for that mortgage, but instead of the mortgage lender being the bank, it's the seller who's the bank, right? So you can come up with any terms that you want. Everything is negotiable. The rate is negotiable. The closing date is negotiable. How long the terms go are negotiable. If you want their cat in the contract, that's negotiable, man. You put it all in the contract, everybody signs, and as long as you fulfill the contract, you have full rights to the property as listed within that contract. All right, guys, before we go any further, I want you to do two things for me, all right? Number one, go to my Facebook business page, boom, and you're gonna see stats of the day for the Treasure Coast. It's gonna fill your mind, man. Number two, boom, I want you to go over to my Instagram handle, check that out. You can look at my stories and you're gonna see how my day progresses almost every single day to the minute. All right, so the second way to get alternative financing is using the seller to do a lease to own or rent to own, right? So a lease to own or a rent to own, just like a contract for deed spells it out in the title, so does a lease to own. You are leasing the property to eventually own it. Okay, so just like with a contract for deed, everything here is negotiable, okay? So you can negotiate how much the rent is, what portion of the rent goes to paying down equity, how long you're able to pay rent before you're forced to purchase the property with some sort of financing that's also negotiated. All of these things are negotiated in, and as long as you fulfill the terms, you have the right to purchase the property as listed within the terms of the contract. So this gives you two big benefits as a buyer, right? Number one, it allows you to pay that equity down. When you're renting, if you're paying $1,500 a month, it is all going out the window. That is sad, man. But if you're paying $1,500 a month to me and I'm the owner and it's a rent to own, maybe we've agreed either on an amortization schedule or I just say, hey, it's a flat rate. It's $300 a month of your $1,500 goes to paying down the principal every month. The second big plus is you get to pick a price today if the seller agrees on it, right? So if it's a $250,000 home, you can say, I'll buy it for 250. They, a lot of times, are gonna wanna put a little bit of a cushion in there because they're doing you a deal, right? They're giving you a better offer than you're gonna be able to get because traditionally, you're not able to get financing. Your credit's probably off, your income hasn't been established. For whatever reason, you can't get financing. So if a home is 250, a lot of, a lot of times I'll see that you as a buyer will have to purchase it for 255, 260, 265. But the big plus about establishing a price today is that the risk is minimal. If you get two, three, four years down the road and decide I want to continue to move forward buying this house, you know that the price is 260. So yeah, that was 10 grand higher than what it was when you originally made the deal, but now because it's been years, maybe that house is worth 275 and you're still only paying 260. All right, so the third way of financing a property without using a bank is to get investor involved, right? Go out and find your own investor, bring them in, and they're gonna give you so many options. So let me give you the two examples we already talked about, right? A contract for deed, and a lease to own. If I'm a seller and I want the cash because I'm gonna move on to that next property or I just want the cash, I don't want to deal with leasing you that property for years or having a contract out for years. I want my money today, baby. 
So what you and I can talk about with me as a seller and you as the buyer is, hey, if you can't go out and get a conventional FHA or VA loan, let's pull in an investor and ask them what terms they would give you, right? Now it is gonna be higher. So right now the prevailing rates are right around three and a half, four percent 4%, right? They might come in and say, listen, I need to make 6%, I need to make 7%, whatever it is they're comfortable with, and they're gonna establish what it is you need to pay them so that they feel comfortable making that investment on you. And the great thing about an investor is, while they're tougher to find, you're able to go out and look at multiple investors and pick which one offers you the best negotiated terms. All right guys, those are the three types of alternative financing that you can use to buy that next home if for whatever reason, you don't like conventional FHA or VA financing. If you like this video, please go down and hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe so you can get all my updated videos and you guys stay fired up.